Hello again. In this video, I'm going to be creating an illustration of an electric guitar, particularly uh, a Les Paul Gold Top with P90 uh, pickups. But I'm using Photoshop and I'm trying to maximize Photoshop tools um, to create all the different bits. So here you see me uh, using the path tool to create the shape of the body. And I'm eyeballing it. I do have a, a guitar like that sitting next to me, but I'm mostly eyeballing the shape because I didn't really want to go in and use like a blueprint or a photo off of the internet. Uh, the neck as well. The neck is really wide because at this stage I was going to make a cartoon type guitar. And by the end I decide that the headstock and the body kind of have a semi-realistic proportion and decide to adapt it. So the, the way I did the neck was I created the rectangle and used the perspective to create that sort of slanted look. And I used the perspective here as well to generate that simulated spacing of the little frets on the neck of the guitar. Also the, the wood texture on the guitar is made by a mix of uh, a cloud texture that has been blurred and had the, the curves um, shaped with a pencil tool uh, and then a fiber uh, render from the, the, the render uh, filter. Here I'm creating the little inlays to um, um, signal the 3rd, 5th, 7th, ninth, I think, 12th fret and then the mirrored version after the 12th fret. And because I already want to use some sort of inlay look, like Mother Pearl and stuff like that, I try to use the bevel and emboss with a texture on it. And the problem with that is that the texture forces the bevel and emboss to also have edges, which I don't want because these are supposed to be inlays that are on the surface. Now on the body here, I draw a shape for what the reflections kind of would look like as far as I remember from, you know, magazines and studio photos of the guitar because the, 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 the body of the Les Paul on the top isn't flat. It's a slightly arced top, which is very distinctive of this model particularly. And here I'm playing around with using, again, the uh, stroke function on the later styles to create the uh, binding around the neck, the body of the guitar. Same as well with the neck. The problem is that the binding would have to suffer from some light change because of the bottom bit would have some shadows on it. So I have to use the create layer function on the layer styles to actually split from the original layer style. The uh, pickups are P90, which is basically uh, large uh, single coil pickups. Um, and so they have this set of screws in the middle because there's only one coil. Um, and But they're wider and they have that rounded edge, which I created using a rounded box shape uh, from the shapes tool. And here I create the little drop shadow to push them outside of the body, as well as uh, the drop shadows on the screws as well to sort of create a volume around it. Here's the bridge, and the bridge is basically a flat surface, which then has cut pieces into them. Basically, I create this shape, I start playing around with it, and then quickly realize that if I'm going to do this by hand, it's going to be complicated. So instead, I just make a sixth of that shape, and I work that specific shape using a little bit of a razor tool, a little bit of selections and deletion. And then these are the saddles where the strings actually sit. And these have very specific positions depending on the intonation and the type of strings you have in your guitar but they do, they are very uh, rarely in line and this is the stop tail piece which basically holds the strings and it has a certain curve on it and the top is slightly curved and that's why I created that effect of, of, of curve the screws I think might have a little bit too much bevel on them but I think it helps stand out on the overall illustration if I push too close they look a little big, but if I pull back, then they look nicer. Here I'm just putting stuff into uh, groups because otherwise it'll be very messy. This is the pickup switch. It uh, selects between uh, one pickup, both pickups, or the other pickup. And it's basically a disc that is made of, uh, I think this is backlit, backlit plastic. I'm not really sure. And it has a top switch, which is basically this sort of like a pill switch. Um, which I create by sort of shading a sphere and then duplicating the pixels on the bottom until I have this long pill, which I then uh, scale using the skew or the perspective transform with a transform tool. Here I'm using a gradient, a radial gradient, to simulate the shape of the uh, bottom of the volume knobs. The volume knobs, if you look at them from the side, they're like a lamp, um, which basically they widen at the bottom. And these are all filled in. They, they actually have like a... a, um, a plastic uh, body which is filled in but underneath they have this interesting shape which is meant to hold the screw that's underneath them and that's why you see those translucent shapes on this this pickup specifically 
I also wanted to do the numbers on the pickups for the volume. And what I did was I created a circular path and then drew text on a path. And once I did that, I added the drop shadow effect, but with a bright color so that it looks like they're slightly inlaid. And then and I also wanted to do the same for the markings because this is just the, the level of the volume, but I also want to do the markings. And I used the pipe and the, um, what you call it, the uh, um, apostrophe uh, symbols on a text plane and just added those to the pickups. It, it's not like correct, but it makes them look realistic, I feel. Uh, this shape also is the place where you plug in the cable for the guitar or the lead, I think. And I hand drew this shape on the bottom, which would be like for a bottom reflection. And I just bind that shape to the shape of the body. And I really just leave it there. I don't really work it that much into the shape because as soon as I do it, I kind of feel like it's working well enough that I don't need to do that much to it. So these are the, the places where you hold the strings, which <laughs> I really don't know the name now. Um, but they're basically um, sort of dome, dome shaped base and the dome shaped top as well. So it's basically the same shape and I just changed the colors a little bit. And these are the tulip tuners. Um, uh, these are my favorite by far. Uh, and they're very odd because the, the color that they have is very specific and they never really match any guitar. But for some reason, they really look great on the, the Gibson models. Um, even though I don't think they're like the best quality ones or the best ones you want to use, but they look very vintage, very cool. So here's when I decide that the neck is actually not big enough for it to be a cartoon guitar, but not th thin enough for it to be a realistic one. And then I change stuff around. And I think I mess up with the changing here of the of the, the, the tuner, uh, uh, not pegs, but the tuner uh, 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 pillars, the cylinders, because they kind of move, up, move out of place. And I kind of find it really hard to actually put in the strings without having them touch each other. The strings, what I did was I created a, a path that would basically go through the six strings and then use the um, selection stroke. I actually did a three pixel stroke throughout the whole strings and then I just played around with uh, overlay and uh, and then use the infamous dodge and burn tool on the, um, on the bottom three strings and the top three strings as well, but in a different step so that they have like this different reflection value. I just copy the whole layer from the, the top, the, I mean the whole guitar duplicated it and add blurred to it and basically created this shadow so it looks like it's floating. And this is basically the end result and I go, hope you guys enjoyed it and that you learned something from this Photoshop endeavor. Take care. See you next time.